You know what, just for the heck of it, I'm just gonna do some eight plays of Ace Attorney. I mean, I love this game, but I think I, I, mean, I might remember too much of this, but hey. I mean, I'm not exactly one to do a blind run of the other two games, or other games on the, that I can play. But not, not just two. Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this! It's just a combo! They show off who the villain is! In the first part, this is... <laughs> someone like him! <laughs> I don't make it! Looks like he did it! <laughs> August. 3. Hey, it's actually red! I, I never noticed that! I, I always thought it was black. Boy, am I nervous. Right! Oh, hi, hi Chief! Uh, I'm glad we made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It takes a lot of, you know, like, t I mean, it takes a lot about- It says a lot about you! And your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant for this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's the one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to. I want to help him out as I can. It. I just really want to help him. I really owe him that much. It's over. My life's everything. It's all over. Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death, despair. Oh! I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Um. Yeah. <sighs> Nick? Nick! I mean, hey there, hey there, Larry! Dude, I'm so guilty! Don't want guilty! Thumbs up, yo! Give me the death sentence! I ain't afraid to die, yo! What? what what's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over! I, I'm finished! Finished! I can't live a war, live in a world without her! I can't! Who? Oh, oh, it took her away from me, Nick! Who did this? Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me! Who took my baby away? Mm, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. Hmm. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a very sim fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy was they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my my best friend since grade school. Our our school had a saying: when, when something smells, it's usually the butts. In the, tw in tw the 23 years I've known him, I'm usually been true. He not had a knack for for getting himself into trouble. One thing I could say though: it's usually not his fault, and he just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That that. That I owe him one, which is which is why I took the case to clear his name, and that's just what I'm gonna do. August third, ten a.m., District Court, Courthouse, Courtroom Number Two. <laughs> number Two. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The um, defense is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to assert to ascertain your readiness. Y yes, Your Honor. Oh! Hands shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defend defendant in this case. Uh, Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. 
Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me the name the victim's name. I knew this one. I'm glad I read the case report. I covered it so many times. It's wait. Uh oh. No. No way. I can't I forgot. I draw I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name! Oh, the victim- uh, of course they know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Uh, look, the defendant's name is listed in the court- in the court record. Just touch the court record button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Let's hear your answer. Who's the victim of this case? Court record. I know her name is just... She looks angry! And, ah! Wait, 52? She's 27. Uh, anyways, um... Cindy Stone. Cedar Block! <laughs> now, tell me the cause of death. She died because she was... Hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object because I saw the intro. Correct. You answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, first, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Wright just told us the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? Uh, the murder weapon was a statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Okay, statue. Right. Be sure. Be sure to pay attention to the, to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Touch the court record button. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Shut up. What? I didn't say shut up to her. She's a woman. Wait, what? Prosecution call for defendant Mr. Butt to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. This guy kind of reminds me of, oh, of people that, that that are in my order in the court class. That's and that's sad. That's gonna, that's gonna be bad. And then I lose. And then I lose the case because someone was not paying attention and decided not to say anything. So the so the court said it, it was. So the court accepted it as yeah, as that my client was guilty. Um, didn't they all die? Yeah, probably. I was a dumb. She just she wasn't take my phone calls or see me ever. What are you doing, here, Ray? Hey, um, Mr. Butts, you describe it. You're, you're describing visually what we mean by damage. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. Um, she had, um, sorry, I, I'm I'm a demon. Um, she had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies, all of it, lies. I don't want to believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. I'm not keeping up with his voice. Oh my goodness. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We cannot, we cannot, we can clearly see them. What kind of a, a woman this Miss Stone was? Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right, I don't think you want her to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth out in all the wrong directions. Should I? Stop him from answering. My client has no idea of the victim was seeing other men. That question is re irrelevant to the case. Oh, when... Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? Like a cheating cheat dog. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna be trapped in. Yeah, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna, in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Sorry. Uh, that wasn't cool of me. I believe the accused motive, accused's motive was it's clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. 
You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Oh! Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Uh-oh. Send him a signal. Lie like a dog! Um, well, let's see, it's like this. I, I don't remember. You don't remember. Well then, we really just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is this, who is this witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime! Order, order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Victor Frank Sawit to the stand. <laughs> Sawit! <laughs> saw, saw it. Mr. Saw it. You you sell newspaper subscriptions in is it correct? Oh yes, yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawitz, you may pursue with your Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Oh boy, witness testimony. We're getting somewhere. I was going through the door, selling descriptions like subscriptions. When I was when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I, I thought he might must have been in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead! I quailed in fright, found myself unable to go inside. I, I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was when I could be in. The man who, who was without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why don't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't the phones supposed to be working during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone Mr. Mr. Sots used was one of those, Your Honor. I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Per per no, Mr. S Mr. Wright? I yes, er, yeah, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? Alright, Mr. Wright, this is, this is the real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, why you suppose, why you exposed the lies in their testimony the witness gave? You gave lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then, that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or, is your client really guilty? <coughs> I'm very professional. Um, how do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Comp compare the, wit the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There is bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you find found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face! Um... Touch the court record button and point of contradictions to the good money. Okay, I'll do that. I was going through the door. Sorry, okay, I don't have to read this. Okay, now there's a specific one that I have to like. I remember this this case. Then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. I quailed in fright, found her unable to go inside. But the problem is, I thought that my. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. But he said, I mean, but he actually said the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Yes, I mean, no, yeah, no, it wasn't. But you said you didn't go inside the apartment, or did you? Oh, oh, that I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call, and that phone wasn't working. Correct. What happened next? Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being in the middle of the afternoon, there was no there was no answer at nearby apartments. Alright, what time did you call again? But 
wait a minute. 4 p.m. through 5 p.m. You found the body at at 1 o'clock p.m. You sure? Yes, it was at what it was at 1 o'clock p.m. for sure. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to or no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Oh, that. Oh. But this is trivial. The witness nearly forgot the time. Um. I don't think. I don't. Uh, what the. Uh, sorry. After this testimony, I believe. After this testimony, I found that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I. Er. Uh, well, I. Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and there's, and their whole story falls apart. Yeah. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Well, you see, I when I found the, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. <laughs> Oh, it was, it, it was, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. Yeah, I, that's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about that misunderstanding. Terribly sorry. Ter terribly, terribly. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time of the program. Is it right? You may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I got this one. Yep. And I, like, push up my glasses and do stuff. You see, I found the body. I knew. There was a voice in the time. It was probably from the television. Bull crap. Blackout. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. At the end, this record proves it. And that's pretty bad for someone who's trying to make up a story. <gasps> you couldn't have heard a television or a video. <gasps> I, well, er, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sot? Uh, no, I, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. <laughs> ah! W wait, wait, remember now. Mr. Sot, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. <gasps> my, my apologies, Your Honor. It, er, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sarge. Let's, let's hear your testimony one more time, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it! There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to be the victim. That must have been what I saw. Huh? You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. You defend me cross examine it gladly. That's kinda weird. I mean clock? Actually, I, I love this music by the way. Did you hear that? This is the first time I've heard of it. Yeah, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That, that's what I that's what I said. Did you dose off the metal this one or something? Something's fishy here. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. Now find that contradiction. Anyways, um, the thinker. 